Mother Man. Hey, this is Chris from Warpaint. Uh, you're listening to Murder Metal Mayhem. Spreading faster than a case of the clap in a trailer court. Able to shatter eardrums within a 666 mile radius. A podcast more brutal than all the rest. It's Murder Metal This is Pete Altieri with Murder Metal Mayhem, and I have the privilege to be doing this interview with Chris Wallstrom, bassist of the Swedish thrash metal band Warfect. Thanks for taking the time out to talk to me today, Chris. How are things going with you in Sweden these days? Hello. Thank you very much for having me. Well, uh, it's pretty much like everyone else. So we, we have this pandemic situation going on here. Uh, and uh, we thought we saw the end of it, but <laughs> it's starting to to to, to uh, stir again. It's, I don't know, but w- w- it's okay here in Sweden. Good. It is. So it's uh, it's. Uh, well, you guys get to practice today. You said for the first time in a while. How did that feel? Yeah, uh, yeah. It actually didn't happen. <laughs> oh, it's going to happen. Okay. <laughs> it's going to happen. So yeah. Uh, but but it's it's pretty good in Sweden anyways. But but yeah, uh, we are seeing a, a little more restrictions now again. Yeah. So, That's, so yeah. Like you said, though, kind of like that everywhere, even here in the U.S. So yeah. Um, now it's been over a year since your last album, Specter of Devastation, came out. How did the metal community seem to dig that? Fans and. And just the the media, did you guys get good favorable reviews from that? Yeah, I think uh, I think we got got great reviews, and uh, uh, I really felt people liked uh, the album. Uh, it was unfortunate uh, the album release was during the COVID uh, pandemic, but right. what can you do? We we uh, we had recorded the album, and we couldn't wait for for the pandemic to, to, uh, <laughs> like, uh, go over. So, so, so we needed to release the album and, and, uh, the label wanted to release the album as well. So, so we had to release it. Uh, but anyways, I, I think, uh, we got great reviews and people seem to like it. Yeah. Uh, and really uh, grateful of course. So yeah. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. the video you did for Left to Rot. I've shared that a couple times on my personal Facebook page, and a lot of my metalhead friends are like, hell yeah, thanks for turning me on to Warfect. So uh, yeah. so that's yeah. awesome. The video really turned out good. Yeah, I think so too. So so videos are super important nowadays. Uh, when we play live, pe- people uh, seem to know the, the songs we have videos for. So it's it's uh, very important with videos, and it's important to play the songs live that you have videos for because right. they want to hear them. Yeah, uh, Drone Wars is another good one. I like that video. <laughs> yeah, <too. laughs> it's it's an it's an older video, but it's good. It's, it's still going strong. Yeah, and we play it every show. So That's it's awesome. it's a good yeah yeah good stuff. I think the album's amazing. As I told you, I. Uh, Wished I would have learned to you guys sooner, but I'm glad I'm, I'm you know, uh, involved with you guys now. Now, you mentioned a label. Uh, what is the label that you're on and how long have you guys been with them? So we're on Apalm Records and uh, we were actually unsigned uh, when recording the uh, album. Uh, we did the recording and we finished the whole album uh, with the cover art, everything. Uh, and we sent it to, to a few labels and uh, uh, Napalm Records called. And we decided to, to settle on them. So, so we've been uh, with Napalm Records since the release of the album. That's fantastic. And anybody listening that's U.S., I was able to get one of their shirts from the label. They have a North American office. Yeah. And I yeah. got it sent to me like super quick, a very reasonably priced. So if you're listening and you want to support these guys and you're in the United States, um, check that out because that's a good way to buy the stuff a l- little cheaper. And, of course, it doesn't take quite as long trying to get here from Europe. So Yeah, 
exactly. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the label seems like a good label, checking out some of the other bands, and uh, so that's cool. That's Yeah, absolutely. And that, they've become li like quite the uh, thrash metal label nowadays. Yes. So there's a lot of thrash metal bands, both new and uh, the old ones as well. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, speaking of thrash, uh, that's my metal of choice. I like uh, several genres or, or sub-genres in metal, but thrash is always my number one. I hear a lot of influences when I hear you guys. I hear a little bit of Sodom, mostly with the vocals. Uh, Creator, I hear a little bit of. I hear a little bit of the U.S. stuff. What are some of the bands that would have been in the early influences of Warfect when, when you guys were starting out? So, obviously, we, we listen to the, the Teutonic Thrash metal bands like uh, Destruction, Sodom, Creator. Right. Uh, as well as the U.S. Uh, thrash metal scene, Exodus, Slayer, uh, but 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 also we're very uh, inspired by Brazilian thrash metal bands like uh, Sepultura. Right. Uh, they're a huge inspiration to us, uh, uh, and we also have our roots in in black metal. Me and Frederick. So so a lot of inspiration is taken from the black metal. Uh, okay from the early 90s when we grew up okay. uh, like dissection right. uh, we, we listened uh, to dark funeral and, and a lot of black metal bands swedish norwegian mostly uh, but they inspired us as well uh, writing this music we we write nowadays so it's it's a it's a little bit of a mix like yeah, a fresh i can, I can hear metal. it I can metal, hear. Death metal. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I mean, you guys own it. I mean, it's your sound, but I can hear little glimpses of things when I listen to you. So that's really cool. I always like to ask bands that because sometimes I'm totally off base. And then other times they're like, yeah, you're dead on with what we dig, you know. So I've been listening to some Australian thrash uh, bands like In Malice's Wake, Harlot, um, you know, there's some really good uh, thrash metal in Australia. I would have never thought of them as being a hotbed of that, but th there's some good stuff there worth checking out. Yeah. Um, now, I'm a bass player as well. I really dig your tone. Uh, what made you decide to play bass? Well, actually, I was uh, I was a guitar player. <laughs> there's <laughs> a like lot of them like that. <laughs> like many bass players. Right. Uh, so I was playing guitar, but but back in the day, uh, Frederick was calling and and he asked if I uh, if I wanted to play bass for for a band uh, he didn't play in, uh, but he knew the guys. Oh, and, okay. And uh, uh, he pitched me, and I said, "Well, yeah, why not?" So so I started to play bass with them. So it, it was uh, like an underground uh, kind of. Uh, uh, I wouldn't say black metal band, but it was called Best in Mockery. So, so it's 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 kind of an uh, unholy underground right. underground band. Um, um, but I started playing bass, and I I thought uh, it was good. I still played the guitar, but 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 it was good playing bass. And then Freddie called again and uh, asked if I wanted to join another band um, playing bass uh, that he was playing in it. And it was it was kind of the foundation that several several years later led to the uh, formation of Warfect. Oh, I would say. cool! So, cool. so me and Frederick have been playing together for quite some time. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, I had a friend of mine that was a guitar player that was trying to form a band, and he said, "Man, I cannot find a bass player." He goes, "If there could be somebody that would just buy a damn bass." And an amp, I could teach him how to play it. He could pretty much pick any band he wanted to be in. And I thought, hmm, I had a little bit of money from a paper route I had. So I went and bought a cheap Fender copy and a little 25-watt amp and learned how to play bass like super fast. So, And I've been playing ever since. And that was 19... I'm dating myself here, 1984. So yeah. uh, I was playing right in the middle of all the... You know, new metal coming out. The underground scene was like blowing up and it was just a great time to be in the metal. And uh, yeah, so that's what got me started playing bass, listening to Geezer Butler and Steve Harris and 
and some of those bass players just unbelievable but i really yeah. dig your tone man it's really sweet thank you very much yeah it sounds thank nice and thick um i think in one of your videos you were playing a jackson bass is that what you use or at least one of your bases <laughs> well actually uh i have a jackson bass but i don't play it very much so so okay. it's, i it's see no fenders on the wall back there it looks like a fender well, Actually, it's not a Fender, but it's oh. it's, it's it's a Lakeland. Oh, uh, nice! Yes, it's a custom Lakeland. So I've been using Lakeland for a few months now, and yeah. I'm super satisfied. I think Geezer uh, so Butler plays a Lakeland, if I'm not yes. mistaken. That's actually how I ah. found the, the hard brand. To, hard to argue with the tone of tones. I mean, yeah. <laughs> there is no other metal bass player that can ever do that. I mean, he is. Yes amazing yeah all-time idol geezer butler yeah he's he's amazing and i i noticed he he was using this bass and uh i wanted to put my my own touch on it so i decided to to go with a custom one uh nice but i based it pretty much on the the, the one the geezer butler uh, uh lakeland bass awesome. uh, so so but I'm, I'm super satisfied with the uh, with lakeland basses uh but i did use jackson for for a while uh yeah. many years back and i still have the the jackson bass and i use it in the videos especially in the videos where we're outside or in environments where i don't want to use my custom bases <laughs> <laughs> i don't blame doing... you i don't <laughs> so blame then I you. Use jackson bass, but i don't play it live and i don't uh i don't uh, record with it gotcha. no but i still have it what kind of rig do you play through then? So I've been using Harky for quite some time now, and I'm uh, very happy with the the, the, the Harky sound. I, yeah. I we're, we're a three piece, uh, and I I want to to I want the bass to pop. I want to be noticed. I uh, I need some kind of uh, I like attack. Uh, I like this 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 sound of string you know the steely sound uh so i'm i'm uh, using like strings that are super uh super bright yeah uh, i can tell I use, what kind of yeah. is that what kind of electronics are in that lakeland are they active or passive no actually they are passive okay so i have uh, in the other bases i have uh i i i have active electronics but in this one, I felt I would like to try uh, the passive approach because I've tried it before in Fender bases and, 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 and uh, several other bases, but uh, I don't own, I didn't own uh, any bass with passive electronics. So I wanted to try it and it works super nice. That's uh, awesome. Nice, but the other bases are active actually. So, so but cool. uh, I, uh, I use the, the uh, super bright strings uh steel strings yep. uh and the harky amps uh with the aluminum uh, cone just to get the the, the punch the, yeah. the super string steel sound yeah uh, just to break through pop out no. uh, with the guitar no that's so, that's cool I, my specter bass has two batteries in it i'd never seen that before two batteries <laughs> for the active electronics emgs but they're on fire and playing real bright strings, uh, it like you, I really like that kind of sound. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's why I picked it out when I heard you guys. I really liked it. Yeah. That's cool. Very, very cool. Now, um, how difficult is it? You mentioned that you guys are a three-piece, which I always love three-pieces um, because it's so much more of a challenge. But how is that doing the live stuff? Because he's doing solos. And you're holding the fort down. So how does uh, how does that go live? You guys be, are able to pull it off? I think we are. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say difficult, but it's it's maybe more challenging. Uh, first off, you can't hide behind the guitars as a bass player, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, and and uh, also. The upside is that you 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 are able to to uh, embrace the the uh, the stage more because it's more spacious, obviously. Sure, <laughs> uh, sure, that's a good point. But, yeah, but but uh, you can do more things uh, than 
I imagine you you could do. Yeah. Uh, I went from two guitars to one, and I noticed as a three-piece, I was able to do more, like you just said, because I didn't have to worry about clashing with the other guitar player and the rhythms no. while the solos were going on. So during yeah. a solo, you've got a lot more liberty to do some cool stuff because you don't have to worry about a rhythm guitar player and you having to jive together. So it's it's got its ups and its downs. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it, it's 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 both positive and maybe negative. Some people think we should add another guitar, you you know, to get the uh, that get the the fatter sound, so to speak. But right. but I don't. So, but I I have a plan to to be more like. Uh, um, like a guitar player in in certain pieces of the music, like when when Fredrik is doing guitar solos and and other rhythmic stuff, I could like do chords and maybe add a distortion paddle and uh, sure. some other stuff. So I'm working on it just to make it more whole or complete, so to speak. So yeah. Right. Have you tried any of the dark glass pedals? I've got one of those, and it really fattens up the sound big time. <laughs> yeah. I haven't tried a glass, uh, dark glass pedal, but but I really dig the sound, and I I yeah. dig it so much. I I thought I'd buy one because it, it has the tone I want. When mm -hmm. you when you want the bass to pop out, that's that's a dark glass sound for me. Yeah. Uh, so, so I started to to look around for pedals, and actually I was going to to order the uh, one of the dark glass pedals, but it was out of stock, uh. and I. I I really needed uh, to order a pedal for some reason I can't recall. <laughs> uh, so, so, so I, I started to look around again, and I, I ended up buying uh, a Sun Sound pedal that could pretty much do the uh, the dark gloss sound. Oh, and, cool. okay. Uh, I'm really happy with it. So, so I'm using Sun Sound now. Okay. Um, and uh, I can get kind of the uh, the dark gloss sound with the with right. the Sun Sound pedal. Yeah, I interviewed yep. Angelus Apatrida and their bass player just started using dark glass in this last recording yeah. they did. And he was talking to his brother was the one I interviewed. He was saying how much that he liked it. And I said, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been really about that, too. So that's cool. It sounds like we're both uh, very similar in, in things that we like. Now, you you mentioned the COVID situation over there. Is there any... I mean, a lot of bands are setting up tours and unfortunately having to cancel them. Are you guys yeah. doing any booking for next year? Or are you kind of holding off to see how things change or what happens? No, we want to book uh, as much as we can. So we have we have a deal with uh, with um, we have been an agency, so we can't book ourselves. Oh, okay. Uh, so we're we're uh, booked through Napalm events. So it's uh, the booking agency uh, run by Napalm Records. Uh, and that's great, but uh, we would like to accept all the offers we we can get. So, sure. so if they throw something at us, we try to accept it uh, because we want we want to go out there and play. And we haven't played in support of the album. And that's, uh, I think that's a really bad thing. But again, th this is... Uh, something that happens to all the bands that released albums during the pandemic right uh, but it's 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 not very good because you need to, to tour in support of the album because you need to to get out there to get noticed especially for us because we we're a fairly unknown band to the metal community uh so far so we need to go to, to tag along with another band like, like a, a bigger band just to to yeah. get out there and playing in front of people that has never heard of us right uh, and we we have not been able to do that with this album but we will be able to do it of course the next year because we have booked uh first we're going to do a festival in in sweden and then we're going to to tour with Ned boss and uh, burning witches oh nice uh, in the spring so that's going to be Really, really nice. Yeah, so, sure. Oh, yeah. It's very, very important to us. Right. So, and also, it's going to be super fun to get out there again. Oh, hell it's yeah. Been... <laughs> of course, of course. Now, what, uh, there's been a lot of metal albums that have come out this year. Are there any that really stand out to you as a, as a metal fan, Chris? Any that you really dig? 
Well, actually, no. I would like to say yes, but <laughs> then I think I've missed it. So, so I don't. I don't know. I think 2020 was a better, better year uh, in regards to metal releases, but I haven't heard all of them. All of them, of course, but but I couldn't mention one. What about the new Exodus? Have you heard that yet? Well, I've heard it. It's uh, well, it's okay, but being a band like Exodus, you have a super high expect expectation of such a band. Right. So they released so many great albums, you know, it's, it's really hard to top that. Right. Uh, I would rather put on like Temple of the Damned than the like, new album. Really? So, I like the new one, but, uh, but yeah, I love Temple of the Damned too. I yeah, love all I, Exodus stuff. It, it's not bad, but you right. know, doesn't stand out to you as uh, the way the other ones maybe did. No, no, unfortunately not. Yeah, well, that's all right. <laughs> well, with, like you said, there was some really great releases in 2020. We're doing a countdown of our favorites in 2021, and I was just kind of curious if there were any that you uh, that you liked out of the bunch. Um, now, uh, what are some bands that you listen to, maybe some underground or local type bands that our listeners might not know about? I've learned about so many great bands by asking this question. I'm just curious if there's any bands you have that, you know, maybe we don't know about. Yeah. So we, we do have a Swedish, uh, thrash metal band, uh, that we're really into their super super good uh it's it's a great fresh metal band called fku freddy cruz underwear <laughs> so uh, i don't know how famous they are but but they they're more famous than us i'm sure of that but okay but uh, a lot of people haven't heard about them and should really check them out their latest release is absolutely stellar it's, oh, it's wow. a super it's F super threat fku yeah. you said yeah freddy cruz underwear underwear fku yeah Check them out because yeah. they're good. Also, I, I've been listening uh, to a, a band called Schizophrenia. Uh, they have an EP that is uh, really good, and I think they're about to release an album as well. So oh, cool. They're worth checking out if you're into thrash metal, I think. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I always ask that question. I get some great ones uh, for sure. Now, um, what's the scene like in Sweden for metal, more specifically thrash, but in general, uh, what uh, what kind of, you know, bands typically going on right now? Of course, with COVID, things have changed, but outside of COVID, what would you say the scene's like over there for metal? So, so this, the, the, the metal scene in Sweden is great, I think. It's been really strong since the, uh, since the 90s. Like in the early 90s, mid 90s, uh, a lot of uh, bands started to, to uh, emerge, I think, and went, went pretty big, like, like In Flames, The Haunted, At The Gates, right. uh, Entombed, Dissection, Dark Funeral, Marduk, a lot of bands, uh, Death Metal, Black Metal, uh, uh, and also like Thrash Metal, but... but, but the, the, the thrash metal scene in Sweden is not huge. It's not huge. Uh, we have a, f a few thrash metal bands like FKU, for example, and another band called Antichrist, uh, and obviously several more bands. But but we're we're a lot bigger uh, on the other subgenres of of metal. I think like you know the haunted arch enemy. Uh, in flames you know right. those those kind of bands uh, we have a lot of those kind of bands that are huge right. so, so the in sweden is great it, yeah. it's it's big and, and you you know a lot of people that play metal in sweden uh, and it's uh i think it's go it's still going strong that's awesome that's great that's fantastic to hear uh, what about new material for you guys? I mean, I know you have an yeah. album out. It's been out for over a year now. Um, and I'm sure you guys are probably working on some new things, but any plans uh, for what's going on next for you guys? 
So yeah, we, we're we're looking at some new stuff. Uh, we're writing and we're rehearsing some new stuff. But as far as releasing new stuff, uh, it will be a while because because of the the uh, pandemic situation and not being able to tour in support of the Spectre of Devastation album. So right. so we probably won't release another album for the next album for another two years, I think. Right. So we, we need we need to market this album properly before sure. going on to the next one, because you, you could obviously release like f- five albums straight <laughs> up. Right. Like, that won't be a smart thing to do because people will forget about will, the other ones. No, that will, well, they will miss out on, on the albums. And right. The songs. So, yeah. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, what about podcasts? Are there any podcasts that you listen to, whether it be metal or anything else like that? Well, actually, I don't listen to, to very many podcasts, unfortunately. I would like to do, but but currently my time is super limited. But I do listen to some com- podcasts because I'm writing the lyrics and I'm writing ah. uh, writing. I'm, I'm listening to, to podcasts and other stuff, you know, to, to get inspiration. Sure. Uh, uh, and well, I'm, now you got Murder Metal Mayhem to listen to now. Yeah, absolutely. Now we're going to feature you guys in a week where we're doing the the guy from Russia that dug up little girls out of the cemetery and made human dolls out of them in his apartment. Uh, so there's some really? in, there's some inspiration for you to yeah, uh, write absolutely. about uh, the Russian doll man uh, Anatoly. Oh, I'm blanking on his last name, but I just posted it on Facebook and tagged you guys in it. But uh, unbelievably uh, grotesque story of a guy who uh, really wanted a daughter of his own and they wouldn't let him adopt. And so he decided to make his own out of uh, what he got out of the cemetery. So, oh, that's uh, it's pretty that's gruesome. Really, <laughs> it's gruesome. And it's, it's the stuff I, I do write about. And, yeah. And- yeah so that's there you go there's a song right there (laughs) i had to listen to it (laughs) anything else you want to put out chris anything you want to mention about any projects anything at all that we haven't talked about no i i being being uh playing in in a fairly unknown band to the metal community i would like i would hope people would uh give us a listen just to see if, uh, if it's something they like. Because if you're into thrash metal, you might like uh, our stuff, I think. I think uh, they will. I'm I'm going to actually play them a song, Chris, so they are going to be forced to listen <laughs> to some War Effect. I really love the song. We mentioned it earlier with the video, Left to Rot. Anything about that song, The about the lyrics or anything about it you want to mention? What's it about? Oh, uh, so Left to Rot is... is it's actually also about Russia. Oh, so it's it's about um, a huge railway uh, construction project uh, they took on uh, building a super long railway, and and uh, a lot of people died. Oh, boy. <laughs> and it, it was like a labor camp uh, style going there. Right. Uh, it, it was very. It's it's very interesting, but it. Hmm. So it, it it actually did happen, and a lot of stuff, almost all the stuff I write about, uh, has happened uh, in the past. So I, I'm I tend to use a lot of history. That's uh, good. That's good stuff. Yeah. Well, I want to say thank you for coming on the show and doing this. We'll leave them with left to rot, so they could check out Warfect. If you're listening to this on Murder Metal Mayhem, link to the uh, I'll link to these guys in the episode description, so, so you can go to their pages and order their merch. And right now, we need to support the underground bands. I went and bought a Warfect shirt, and so can you, or a CD, or anything you can. Thank you, Chris, and good luck to Frederick and the rest of you guys. And horns high from the U.S., man. Thank you very much. Thank you.